is Thursday. Welcome back and hope you're having your cup of tea or coffee. I'm having a double espresso. What we're going to talk about is the roundup, what's been going on, because there's been a lot of news coming out from Manchester United today and yesterday. And Marcus Rashford, of course, is the topic of everyone's lips. PSG has expressed interest to replace you know, Kylian Mbappe, who is set to go to Real Madrid in the summer with Marcus Rashford. Of course, they've been interested in Marcus Rashford for quite some time. But some reports coming out to say that they are willing to offer 75 million euros. The question is, what do you think? Do you think Marcus Rashford is worth more than 75? We're going to dive into that as well and look at his overall evaluation on transfer market. And however, Reports also coming out to say that Rafael Varane, who we all know, our beloved Rafael Royce Royce Varane, is down to his last year of contract. And you know that Ineos, they are looking to overhaul you know anyone that's earning over 150k a week. And he's one of our top earners, earning about 300k a week. Rafael Varane has expressed his interest to say he's not willing to leave. He wants to stay at Manchester United and... And see out his career at United with a lower wage bill. So that is very interesting news as well. So tell me how you're all doing, what you're drinking. Let's talk to you because I want to have a conversation with you today. You know, um, where is all the viewers today? There's nobody here. Where is everyone? <laughs> What's going on here? Where's the comment section? Oh my God, comment section is not working today, unfortunately. Oh, what's going on here? YouTube is playing out people, so I cannot see your comments live here. So I'm going to have to switch back to the main scene. Anyway, I do have YouTube live streaming going on in another application, but it's not loading for some reason either. Yes, I can see uh, Jordan Waltz is here. What's up, big up, Ashid? Good morning to you as well, my friend. For some reason, for some strange reason, we have a YouTube bug today. So... Hold your horses. Let's just have a conversation, peeps. Let's just have a conversation. Now, Jaden Sancho scored his goal at uh, you know the Euro and, and and made money worth. You know, they are now qualified to the quarterfinals. We're talking about Borussia Dortmund, of course. And Borussia Dortmund has been trying to play United for mugs to say that we were willing to offer Jaden Sancho another year as a loan. And that means that Sancho has two years left on the contract for three. But if you loan him out another year, they will pay less. But United has said, we are not having none of it. And that's why you've seen John Murta traveling around, speaking to Real Madrid, Barcelona, and many, many clubs. And by the way, a lot of people say, is John Murta's job safe? The answer is no. John Murta is simply warming up the market um, just to go out to see who is available, what United have to spend you know, told to be sold. Finally, he's doing some work instead of sitting on his ass, but he's been told to do so, according to sources that I've been speaking to. But um, now comments are coming in. Good morning to you. Uh, Jesus Christ, what is going on here? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, it's slowly loading in. I know it's early morning, but let's have a conversation because at the end of the day, let's talk about Marcus Rashford. I know a lot of people went berserk yesterday to say, oh, well, I will sell him for 75. But if you really look at it, right, Marcus Rashford, international, well-known branding name, why should we sell him for 75? Why? Uh, that's a big question. If you look at the transfer market, right, if we just have a look at the transfer market, his overall valuation is worth 70 million. 70 million. That is according to the transfer market. Rashford signed a contract, new bumper contract last year to see him being one of the big earners earning 30,000. He's got a three years contract expiring June 30th, 2028. So therefore, peeps, what PSG was saying and what people were saying in Twitter that they felt that he was using to bump up his contract. He's already bumped up his contract last season, right? But however, this is a prime target for PSG. It is. Because at the end of the day, he is willing to continue his career at Manchester United. 
according to reports as well. He's willing. But he's willing also to listen to, to offers, right? Uh, a tweet that came out one hour ago, Justin, Marcus Rashford wants to continue his career at Manchester United, but PSG high salary and long-term con contract offer could change his mind. Of course, money talks, right? Now, you can argue to the point that Marcus Rashford is a world-class winger. He's not a striker. We can argue to the point that he hasn't had the best season in United. We can also argue to the point that he's Manchester bred through and through ever since he came through the academy. But 100%, he has not been shown that level of intent this season. And rest assured that Ineos is coming in now. And I've been told it's going to be a massive summer for United, both ins and outs. First and foremost, this, the structure above the manager will be sorted out before the transfer window. And there'll be a lot of outs. And if they receive a bid for 75 million, I'm sure they will consider it. But at the end of the day, it comes down also to Marcus Rashford. What do you want? What do you want? Because you can't really force the lad out of the club either. But on the other hand, you have to show intent that next season you will give it all. Because there will not be any missing around with Omar Barada at the helms, Dan Ashwood at the helms. You know, it, it will be a totally different Manchester United. No more this Ed Woodward stuff, right? No more this John Murta stuff. They foster this hierarchy, the dressing room power, player power and all that stuff, right? That's going to be all gone. And the players know that already. So either you stick or you leave, according to my opinion. I want to hear from you. Good morning, Stephanie Griffith. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? How are you doing, Stephanie? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Aish. Now the chat is starting to pop up, working. Seven likes, six watching. Yeah, well, the reason per se is I went a little bit earlier today because it's my eight years wedding anniversary today. So I promised to be a good boy and take my wife out for a surprise. And that's what I'm going to do the rest of the day. So that's the reason why Mick is live a little bit earlier today. I know Mark Goldbridge is live. I know that everyone is live. But at the end of the day, we have a community and uh, community needs to be addressed as well. And we've got to have a conversation. So let me know in your, uh, you know, in the comments there what you think, right? Would you sell Marcus Rashford for over 75? If Transfer Mark is saying that he's worth 70, right? He's got three years left on his contract. He's an England international. He's a branding name that everyone knows. And you know that it can score you or give you 30 goals per season, at least what he did last season. But at United, something is not right. Something is really not right. He loves the club, but he just doesn't love the dressing room or the people that he's around him. Maybe for anyone that's stuck in a dead-end job, it's always good to change jobs, you know, to re-spark that motivation, to re-spark that that inner desire, what you have. And maybe that is what he needs to do. I personally thought that Marcus Rashford would never leave the club, right? He's one of ours, 100%. And I don't turn or don't slag on Rashford, but what I do tend to do is look at the overall performance, right? There's far more better players out there, wingers out there, that can play a vers versatile game of football. Marcus Rashford, when you look at him, he's a counter-attacker footballer. And that's what he does best, right? He doesn't shoot. I mean, he shoots, but he doesn't really look up and pass. And he just recently learned last season, at least, to score a header without closing his eyes. So it depends on what you are after, what kind of playing style. But if you're definitely going to play kind of a counter-attacking football, that is the person to go for. Very fast, very explosive. But he's kind of losing his yard of pace and doesn't really like to track back. So to play in PSG, yeah, you wouldn't track back that easy. I mean, that much. And maybe that would be a perfect fit for Marcus. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. I personally would say 100 million. 100 million plus. Why? Well, if you look at the market, it's in kind of the transfer market is always inflating, right? It's 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 like you get 100 million, 150 million for Ozerman, right? You can same prices. City bought Grealish for 100 million, right? And Grealish isn't better than Rashford, 100%. He's not. So why would we sell him for 75 when we actually can squeeze PSG, who has money and who will receive monster money for Kylian Mbappe? I think, no, they probably will not. <coughs> but anyway, they, they have money. 
So I th definitely think this sh should be one of our record selling that we haven't done for years. We haven't sold a player for 100 million ever, according to my memory. But maybe I'm wrong. But I want to hear from you. What are you saying? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jamie Wayne. Happy birthday. To you. <laughs> Big applause for you, everyone. Happy birthday to Jamie Wayne. Um, would love to see him to go, but I believe when Ben Jacobs said PSG won't bid until Rashford tells them to do so. Well, who is Rashford uh, representing? He's uh, represented by CEA base agency. 100% money talks in these days, right? PSG wants him. Agency is there to talk to Rashford to advise his career. And if the right money is there, according to the reports, could change his mind, right? If we go back to the first screen here, they came out one hour. You know, they, he, he's willing to listen if, uh, you know, they offer long-term contract and the right type of salary. So in football today, money do talk, right? Players don't really care who they play for. You know, a football career is very short and anything can happen. You can have like Tyrell Malasia being out for the rest of the season or Julian Timber, bust your kneecap or LC, and you never know. You never know. So a footballing career can be short-lived or it can be long-lived, like Slatan Ibrahimovic playing up to 40, Ronaldo still playing, you know, but it all depends on how you take care of yourself. So in layman's term, it's not like there used to be 10 years ago that you choose for the badge who you want to play. It's now more days as a work. Who will pay you more, right? The project might be interesting with the rebuild of Manchester United. But the question is, with a new potential manager coming in or Ten Hag staying, do you fit what Ineos wants to do? Do you, th do you fit what the manager wants you to do? And that's the big question. Because Ten Hag currently, he wants to play a transition-based football. He wants to play high line to press. And you need dribblers. You need people that can pass, that can deliver ball, balls into the box. Rashford don't offer that. But Rashford is not a left winger. He's an inverted winger. He tends to get the ball, run with it, and cut in and shoot. Seldom does he pass. Happens sometimes, but sometimes it's a mistake. So for me, I would definitely say 100 million. But what what about you? Happy birthday, Jamie Wayne. Um, what are you saying? I might be able to go to the match this weekend, but I don't know. Well, happy happy match day experience. It's Liverpool versus Manchester United at Old Trafford. And by the way, if we're going to talk about that match, Liverpool is playing Europa League today and Thursday, Sunday. So something's got to give. Will they go all in for the FA Cup or will they focus on Europa League and winning the league? I think it's the latter, winning the league. So we will have players coming back. Hoyland is what I've been told is coming back to play on Sunday. We might have Aram Van Basaka as well. So we will be totally balanced. So I do ex expect us to have a result against Liverpool on Sunday. Let me know what you think as well. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welsh girl, good morning to you. I think we should move on from Rashford, but sell for more than 75 million. I agree with you, Welshy. I totally agree. And the reason to say that Manchester United have been crap at selling, but with the new establishment coming in, that will change, right? That will definitely change. Because we had very incompetent people sitting there, like, you know, before, in charge of negotiations. We had Matt, Matt Judge... You know, a banker, a CEO called Woodward that didn't understand anything about football, but he wanted to look good in front of the press, the biggest narcissist ever. And you appointed a fake CEO, a, a fake director of football in John Murtagh just to please the fans and gave a job to John, Darren Fletcher, who is nobody knows what he does. He's been spotted on, you know, picking up cones in Carrington and doing training exercises. And his title is technical director. <laughs> so. 100% I believe that we can actually sell for more than 75. So this tour, what Murta is doing at the moment, he's been told by the senior leadership that you have to go and work right now. We want to have our business done early this season so we can actually go for preseason in US. And I'm dreading because US, 
was where we picked up a lot of injuries due to we played on AstroTurf, if you all remember. So we're going back to US as well. So if United can pull this through, that'd be amazing. 75 million, I take that. Personally driving to Champs-Élysées Sulecé myself in my car. But um, at the end of the day, we are not the sporting director. We are not Manchester United. But at the end of the day, they will be a massive boost into the transfer window. And I've been told that we might have up to 400 million to spend in the window. So we will see. It's going to be a very big summer. Very, very big summer. 11 likes. What are we doing here? I know you guys are blurry eyes. You just woke up. 11 likes. Let's have a drink of a cappuccino. I'm having a caramel cappuccino. Amazing. Mm. So, Jaden Sancho, though, fantastic that he scored yesterday because that kind of increases his value. And there's no way Manchester United is going to loan him out for another season. So, he wants to stay. He's been clearly an adamant brother that he wants to stay at Dortmund. And Dortmund needs to probably pay out. So, will we recuperate 45, 50 million for Jaden? That's, I take that. 100%. It's a loss, I know, right? We bought him for 75, but what, he's been at the club two and a half years almost. It's a loss. But you take that and you add that to the transfer kitty and off you go. 100%. Uh, what you say? I've been uh, jolly I mean, after this season, we would be lucky to get 75 million. He's closer to a 50 million player. Not really, Jolly. You, as, as an agent, as as you go always by the evaluation on the market, right? If you do go to transfer mark, you will clearly see that he's evaluated on 70, 70 million euros, right? You see that his contract is expiring here, right? 30th of June, 2028, right? So you add that on, you definitely add that on to the selling value, right? Three years left on his contract, that adds on to the overall selling price. But what transfer mark is saying, giving you an estimation of his worth, right? That's a starting point. You go and look what Rasmus Hoyland was worth. He was worth 50, but we ended up paying 75. So it's all about negotiation. Uh -huh, you want him? Uh -huh, you're showing your cars. You really want him? You need to replace Mbappe. Okay, here we go. Let's start the negotiations. <coughs> like Harry Kane, he went for 100 or 90. So strikers are well sought. Everyone is looking for one. So I believe it's going to be around 100 or 90. But anyway, positive thing is if he goes, that means that we will have a lot of money in the transfer budget to spend. And who would that be to replace? Who will replace Rashford? Olise set nailed on, according to reports. He will be the first signing done by Ineos. But is there anyone out there, right? Gang Goats, what are you saying? 90 million for Rashford is just about right to me. Yeah. I mean, look at it. 75 million, it's a surplus. It's a surplus because we didn't buy Rashford for anything. He came out through the academy. So that is, that is just a plus. He's a homegrown talent. So that goes straight into the plus in the FFP books. Right or the PSR, what you say, it's just the right buy, right for me as well. So I push for hundred million. Though you can always push, right? Let's say you sell your house. What you do? You don't put this price that you will settle for, like you know, like seventy five million. You always advertise it for hundred and twenty, correct? So why sell yourself short? You, if I would put the price on seventy five million, I might made, made, I might end up selling the house for sixty. Because you know how the bargaining goes between the seller and the buyer. All the people in charge of United the last 10 years are diabolical. That is in the past. But the proof would be in the pudding. You know, with Ashwood coming in. Right? With Omar Barada. With the head of recruitment. Potentially Julian Ward. And also Wilcox. So there would be a totally different organization. And if we've seen Omar Barada, the way... They operate on the city. They all sit in one room. They discuss the different potential targets. They discuss how much and they discuss how much they're going to sell and they will not pay, overpay. If so, they will just walk away. We've seen this videos, clips everywhere. Uh, I keep the run for another year as he's younger than Maguire. That transitions over to the next story, by the way. 
let's go over to that story. Yes, let's do this. Now, people have been talking about Rafael Varan. You know, he there's been rumors and speculations to sell him to Saudi. It's been rumors, speculations, him going back to Real Madrid. But at the end of the day, Rafael Varan, it's all about to what you want to do as a player. Where do you want to stay? Where do you want to stay? So basically, exclusive news. And this is what I've been told as well, that Rafael Varane is open to negotiate his current deal with Manchester United and will accept to lower his wages significantly only to stay at Manchester United for another two to three years. He has no plans to go to Saudi. He plans to retire at Manchester United. This is what I want to hear, right? It's, it's not about the money. It's about passion, you know? That is, I'm tired of these players coming to United just to, you know, get a paycheck. But Rafael Varane here is willing to see out his rest of his career for Manchester United. He loves this club and he's willing to take a pay, uh, pay cut because he doesn't want to play in Saudi. He doesn't want to play anywhere. He came here as a last stance. I certainly will take him. Even if he's injury prone, he's a leader. He's a Champions League, four times Champions League winner. Even if he's still recruiting a Bremer or a Braithwaite, you know, you need to have solid senior leaders, right? Okay, Bremer is 26. Rafael Varane, I believe, is getting closer to his 30s. But still, that's Rafael Varane. Guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think? I believe that Rafael Varane is... That's loyalty. What's, exactly. That's what we want. That is loyalty. And that is what you want too, Jamie. And you give me more players like this, 100%. Rasmus Hoyland will turn out to be cheap. Buy. Exactly. But I hope to buy young up and, and bring talent cheap, cheap buys. Players that, turn, players that will t turn out to be top quality. No more big money buys, please. That never works. You are singing from the same hymn sheet as me, yeah. You see, why would you go and spend 100 million on a striker to splash the cash where you can divide that into three and get top quality? You know, scouting network is huge at Manchester United, but it's all about who is listening, right? If you remember Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when he did that, you know, um, podcast, you know, I think it was with Gary Neville. It was last week, wasn't it? Yeah. And he basically... He, you know, called out how he was, you know. He recommended certain players. He ended up in the pile. The recruitment department never looked at it. They said, no, it's not a shirt seller. But now it's all about identifying the best people in each position, create persona profiles, but also look at the mental ability, right? We don't want fragile players. We don't want to pump at Pampers FC anymore. And this is the only thing that excites me, that I, I'm dying to see what's going to happen with United. How are we going to recruit? Who are we going to recruit? What type of profiles, right? You know, you want warriors. And that's why I believe that Bremer, Juventus, Brazilian, 26-year-old centre-back, is on the list because of his mentality, right? He's got the right attitude. He's a warrior like Licha, good in the air, very explosive, fast, and a good dribbler as well. If you look at Champions League yesterday, uh, Atletico Madrid versus Inter. What a cracking game. But it was a non-stop fight, dogfight. You know, I was looking how the center defenders got out of tight spaces because of the dribbling skills, right? High pressure, pressing. And then you look at United at the moment. We don't even have that kind of cap capabilities in the squad. And why? Because previous managers has been playing counter-attacking football. So they're not used to playing this, you know, possession-based football, uh, high-pressing football. So for me, keep Varane 100%. Keep Varane for another two, three years. Casemiro, potentially sell. He's got two years left on the contract. So that is a value. That is a value. But he's also declining, Casemiro. So we might go and strengthen that in the midfield. That is loyalty. I want that. Um... I think Varane will want to talk, 100%. Is that what you want to hear as well? He sounds like he loves United. We will need leaders like it is. And 100%. And that's the thing as well. Would you keep Johnny Evans for another year just to be around, like just to be a squad player? 
who would have thought that Johnny Evans, when he signed for United for one year extension contract, initially signed just to help out, you know, in the pre-season tour, but then we gave him a one year contract. He's been one of our, I don't know, weird to say, 36 years of age. Johnny's a red, but he's been monstrous. Of course, you can't play him 90, 90 minutes because he will break down, but you can use him here and there. 60 minutes old minutes. But that is passion, right? Johnny Evans is Mr. United through and through. And this is what you want. But on the other hand, I think we will sell McTominay. And I think we will sell Maguire because we need to sell center backs to bring in new. 100%. Yoleman mean Varane staying would mean we would only need one more centre-back, not two. Well, it depends on. Uh, I just said that. We will probably get li- rid of Lindelof and Maguire in the summer, right? If you get rid of two centre-backs, you bring in um, Braithwaite, that I believe, and I'll be told that Everton might be rele- relegated because another 10 points deduction is coming their way as well. Um, so they currently want £70 million for him, you know, Jared Braith- Braithwaite. But at the end of the day, if they do get relegated, you know, you can swoop in for 50. And then you bring in a Bremer for 50, 60, you know. You recuperate money, you sell Rashford, 75, 90 million. You sell a couple of few, few players. You liberate the, the wage bill because you know that Ericsson is leaving. You know that Martial is leaving. So there will be room. 100% will be room. So to get rid of two centre-backs is a must because they don't offer anything at the moment. I'm sorry. Um, if we've got to move on as a club, we've got to get rid of the dead wood and play the style of football that we want to see, right? Good attacking football. Because if you're going to play with Mar- Varane, at least he can play a high line. But if you're going to put like, you know, Maguire and Lindelof, they cannot play a high line. We are stuck at the six-yard box, like we did against with De Gea. Always bubble wrapping De Gea. So playing out for the back is not possible with the, these players. But if you play a system where you're playing in like in a high transition, high pressing game, which Ten Hag wants to do, by the way, he wants to play with eight players up further up the pitch, six pressing and having fast center backs and fast fullbacks tracking back just in case the ball hits over the top. Currently, we only see two, three games that he's done that and he's been reverting back to playing self pragmatic because at the end of the day, it's haram football. It's about saving points. Thomas Ferdinand, what you're saying, Varane should stay unless we can replace him with the players that are same caliber. 100%. I agree with you, Thomas. Um, Brainthwaite, Varane, Martinez. And add on Bremer as well. That is lethal. That is a good, good defense. This is why I never wanted Kane. Hmm. Poor Kane, <laughs> the curse of Kane. And if you look at that, there's also Kim Min Ye that's not getting in it because they brought, brought in Dyer, Eric Dyer. So Eric Dyer is now playing with Matthias De Licht. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? J- Kim Min Ye must be look. What did I do here? Why did I sign up? Anyway, um, what are you seeing on Braithwaite? I'm convinced the lad's got something. He's got abundance of talents, man. He's young still, right? He's tall, he's explosive, he's very good at defensive. And I believe there'll be a lot of players going in for him. But it's going to be a swoop. If Everton gets relegated, they will even have to sell Onana. There will be a lot of people leaving. They're already in financial trouble. So we will see. Top targets, according to me, according to what I understood from yesterday, is 100% Bremer and Braithwaite. 100%. But anything could happen in the window. There might be an opportunity that Bayern Munich is willing to sell Kim Min Ye, push him on. Would you take him? I certainly would. Better than Maguire, better than Lindelof. MFC Charlie, what you saying? Varane will leave on free this summer until won't extend his contract. But that's what we're talking about. He is in current negotiations. He wants to stay. He's willing to lower down his wages. And that's massive. And that is a player that loves this club, that wants to stay, that wants to see out his remaining of his career at Manchester United at top flight because he sees the project. He understands the trajectory where we might be going. All of a sudden, Manchester United will be very, very dangerous. That's what a lot of people are saying out there. Rivals, agents, they've been saying that. Jesus Christ, Mick, if you all get this sorted out, United will be a dangerous, dangerous prospect. And I believe that Varane is seeing this as well. So that's why he wants to stay. 
there might be a potential to win another Champions League within these three years that he's here, or win a Premier League. So basically, he, he came to United to win a Premier League, to win a Champions League, so he wants to see this out. The question is, how much are you willing to drop your, your wages? You're already a millionaire. So for you, maybe it not be all about the money. It might be the cultural experience and, you know, working with your teammates to stay there. You're happy. So big up MUC Charlie as well. Um, Jack Reacher, what are you saying here? Only trash for leaves. <laughs> Trashy. Mm. <laughs> Some people call him trashy. I'm not going to fall that low, but I, I get the point. Um, if he leaves Manchester United, it will improve by leaps and bounds. Yeah. You have a point there. Like, you know, just take what happened to Spurs. You know, as soon as Kane left, they started to cook. You know, they built everything around Kane, and now they're playing with liberation, 100%. So if Rashford leaves, we're not going to be forced to start him every day because he's been, you know, managers been told to start him because he's the poster boy, he's the asset. So that would be definitely a liberation, in my opinion. Um, what you say? Manchester 7, Varane uh, on reduced terms, even with the appearance, Barnes is a, a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer. Keep, keep, keep. 100%. <laughs> Uh, oh, good morning, Wiki. How are you doing? Good morning to you, Vicky Wittebird. How are you doing? Neil Driscoll, good morning. You're all waking up. And let's have a drink of coffee. As I'm about to wrap up my stream, because I promised to take my wife for our eight years anniversary dinner. Surprise. I haven't told her yet. Just say, said to her, pack your bags, we're going. So that's why I'm doing this early morning stream. Um, <laughs> um, Yola was just saying, if Kim is struggling to get uh, game time in Bayern, he's He's a uh, way too similar to Maguire. Maybe it was for the best not to get him. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe it's Thomas Tuchel, right, that doesn't really fancy him, right? We will see. When the new manager comes in, might be Javier Alonso. He might see it differently. He might say, wait, why are you playing Dyer? Play Kim Minye, right? Yeah, missing you too, babes. Good to see you. How you been? How you been? Uh, morning, Neil and Vicky. Morning to you. Well, at the end of the day, I think we're going places. 98 of you watching at the moment in the morning. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Give us a little bit of a cheeky like. That would be much, much appreciated, right? If you don't know what the like button looks like, it looks something like. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the beautiful comments. I really appreciate it. And I've been having some technical issues today with the, with StreamYard and everything, but now it looks like everything is, is working. So... But if you haven't smashed a like, um, do it, 100%. It looks something like this, a thumbs up. It's free, it helps the channel, and also gives us encouragement to continue doing videos for you in the morning and in the evening as well. Are you going to watch Liverpool lose today, or are you going to watch Liverpool lose, win? <laughs> I'm not going to watch Europa League whatsoever. So big up, smash that like, please. 33 minutes, morning to you. Morning, oh, morning, 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 morning. Now, I just want to round up. Wittabird84, um, Vicky just gifted zero again. memberships. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Oh, thank Wittabird you. 84 Vicky gifted Thomas Svegin as a membership. Morning, everyone. Oh, Vicky just shit. gifted membership. Here we go again. Ten, five memberships. And the gifted, gifted memberships were membership. Thomas Svegin Ed Barrett, Nikki Cadigan, Rajat V and Ronak oh, Joshi. Thank you so again. much, Vicky. Whittlebird 84, Vicky gifted Nikki Kadugan a membership. A, a uh, applause. Oh, shit. Big up, Vicky. Here we go again. Thank you so much. Whittlebird 84, Vicky gifted Rajat V a membership. I don't know if you can hear this, but this is going mad. Like him. Ronak Joshi's oh, member shit. as well. Big up, Here man. We go again. Was gifted a membership. Whittlebird 84, Vicky gifted Ronak Joshi a membership. Thank you so much. Good morning from UK as well. Uh, and Nikki Cordigan, welcome to the family. Nikki, I haven't seen you for a while. Good to see you. Rajat Ree was also gifted a membership. Ed Barrett as well was gifted a membership. Welcome to the family, Ed, and hope you're having a fantastic, lovely, lovely, lovely rest of your day. And Thomas, all the way from Gothenburg, Sweden. Hur mår du, gubben? Allt bra, 08, Swedish, that was Swedish. Uh, was also gifted a membership. Anyway, I just want to round up the stream uh, to say thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, again, just catching up with
that's what we're going to talk about. And then I'm so furious with poor journalism, right? Again, our good old friend Samuel Locus is at it again, you know. He's been on for, you know, he's been on Mason Mount's case. He's been, was slagging the Martinez. He was, it's just like, give it up, mate. And now he's going again this morning. Changing squad numbers would be unprecedented for United number seven. But Mason Mount should consider it to help ensure his second season isn't like his first. Mate, Jesus Christ, do you ever give up? I just replied to him. Are you a gossip journalist, work for a you know, vanity fair like Hollywood Insider, or are you a proper sports journalist? Give it up. You, I'm sorry, you, Mark Ogden, and the other ESPN, uh, what's his name, Rob Dawson, are the ones that's been banned from Eric Ten Hag's press conferences. You've been banned for the club for writing constant shit. And you being the one that's been leading the fuel to sack the manager. You're doubling down. This is revenge. And I think it's ridiculous. Manchester United fans, please, I urge you, don't read these headlines, right? It's been dire, like, you know, dressing room. And he's also reporting about the bonding dinner that they had, like, you know. And he said not everyone turned up, like, you know. Jesus Christ, are you paparazzi, mate? <laughs> I'm actually laughing my pants off. You know, I, I can go... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. He's basically saying that not everyone turned up. They had a bonding dinner, and like everyone was spotted. Like you know, <sighs> yo, Samuel Lockhurst. Oh my God. Good morning, Lee Riches as well. Good morning. How are you doing? This is getting laughable. Do you watch? Um... Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, Adam. Good. You know, we have some good mates there. Like, uh, I haven't spoken to Adam personally, but we know a lot of people around Adam as well. So yeah, you know, big up. Um, I think I've seen your name come up. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, we, we do tend to collaborate with a lot of people. Like, you know, big up Adam. He's He did the right thing from leaving where he was stuck and a slave. Now he has created freedom. I mean, I'm looking forward to do something together one day. But, uh, yeah, we, we do have similar people. Uh, Jay Daly is there as well. Jay Daly is coming on to this channel as well. And, and you have seen Andy Tate on this channel. Andy Tate is on that channel. So... It's all about being, you know, a global fan base, you know, no bullshit, you know, call it a spade a spade, but always look at the both sides of stories. And whatever we say here, we don't create the news, we just report on the news, but sometimes we do get indirect scoops that we have to present as well. So <clears throat> why don't you do a stream together? Yeah, well, that's on the cards. I think um, that is on the cards, um, but it's just a matter of time because people are very busy. Like, you, you got to look at... You know, I can understand what he's doing, and I respect that because he's constantly grinding, putting out content. He wants to grow this channel after being stuck with Goldbridge, you know. So it, fair and square, right? So it's all about getting together and find the right time. And we've been also trying to do with Jay Marty from the paddock as well, like you know. But it's all about finding the timing that suits everyone together. And since I moved over to Thailand, um where I'm working at the moment, uh, six months ago, it's, it's the time difference is very, very difficult. Like I'm seven hours ahead of everyone. So it's all about finding the time, but we will definitely do something. And Alice talks football as well. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Well, running up, he's a terrible journalist. Yeah. I wouldn't even call him a journalist. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, Locus is one <laughs> is the one to step away from boiling a bunny. <laughs> oh God. They are not journalists. They are basically, if you watch, like, you know, Hollywood Insider, like, you know, oh, the paparazzi, they all report on gash stories. Anyway, thank you so much for all your donation. Manchester United 7, what you're saying? Ineos need to try to rein in some of these agenda journals. Yeah, 100%. But you know what? This constant media barrier has been out of control lately. I will tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing. When was the last time you saw a leaked lineup? I haven't seen one for three weeks. It started from there, right? You don't get leaked lineups anymore. So they started to screw that, you know, leaks very, very hard. They called the best plumber in, in Greater Manchester in the United area to stop the leaks. But big up from you, uh, from BBK, 100% Fabio Ponton. How you doing? Cheers from BBK. From Cheers, cheers to you, Fabio. Good to see you. It's a new name that I haven't seen before. So everyone, thank you for tuning in. 
I got to wrap up the stream. I've done 10 minutes extra time. And um, yeah, but I got to go, unfortunately. It's been lovely talking to you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we should see you to the next time. I'm out of here. I got to take my wife out because uh, otherwise I've been simbing eight years of marriage. How did we survive? How did we survive? By being a team player. And that's what we are here for. Thank you guys for watching and see you to the next time. Glory, glory, man, cha, star, you, night, ciao. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.